G'day, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. And today, I'm talking to you about Australian pythons. Australia is known as the land of reptiles, and especially our lizards. We have more lizards than anywhere else on Earth. But also our pythons. We have a whole range of species that fit into a whole range of different environments. Our pythons lay eggs. And when we look at things like boa constrictors, they look the same as pythons, but boas actually give birth to live young, whereas pythons lay and incubate their eggs. Let's take a look at the physical features of a python and what they mean. So up around the head, pythons have heat sensing pits. There are actually two in Australia, the black-headed python and woma python that don't. But most pythons have heat sensor pits and they see different to us. Their eyes have great vision, but those heat sensor pits can see the heat signature of animals. So when a thing like a, a hot rat comes in front of the snake, it can use its sense of smell, taste, its vision. They don't have ears, so they can't listen and they use those heat pits and they can see the animal from its heat signature. Pythons have a great sense of taste and they actually taste the air. Now that forked tongue goes out and it's forked because when they flick it out, they're picking up scent particles of their prey. Now, if the scent particles are more on the right side, the snake will turn right if it's more on the left and that's how it's able to track down its prey. Now, let's come down the body. One thing that snakes don't have is arms or legs. So it's a really unique way of movement. And what happens is throughout that body, you've got the rib cage. And it runs the entire length down of the body. And those ribs move like this, kind of like you imagine a train wheels heading around and around. But each time those ribs move and they're sequentially moving down the body, the snake actually uses that as a way to take itself forward. But different snakes have different scales to help with this. So tree snakes typically have really wide belly scales so that they can grip around the trees and move. Now, terrestrial snakes on the ground have a different scale structure and it enables them to grip onto different surfaces to be able to help them to move. There are a whole range of different python species in Australia. Now I'm gonna pick a couple and talk you through their differences. Now one, my favorite, is the green tree python. It's found up in Cape York, Northern Queensland, and it lives in the jungle in the real thick forest. Now it's bright green because it doesn't take shelter like some other snakes do. It takes shelter in the open. It relies on its camouflage. It sits out on a perch and the green blends in with the forest. Now, if we went to a different species, let's say the black-headed python in Central Australia. It's a giant python. They live through the daytime because they're mainly nocturnal. They sleep through the day. They live down in old burrows of bilbies or smaller mammals and things like that. Now, their coloration is really interesting. At night, they're striped and that blends in with a bit of disruptive camouflage, but their head is black as the name suggests. They're actually known to put their head out of a burrow and that black head absorbs so much of the sun's heat and they can regulate that throughout their body. Because all pythons are reptiles, they're cold blooded, they need external temperature like the sun or a rock to heat their body up. Now, another species of python is the pygmy python. Now, they're found in Western Australia and the pygmy pythons live on old red rock and their coloration is exactly like that rock. They camouflage, whether it's day or night, into the rock. All pythons are constrictors and they are not venomous. Now you might ask, are they dangerous to people? Well, most Australian pythons aren't. There is one called the scrub python that can grow up five or six meters. That could potentially be a threat to people, but it doesn't eat people. It eats things like small wallabies and possums. If you jumped just over to Southeast Asia, now we're talking serious pythons, reticulated pythons, the largest snake on earth, Burmese pythons that are almost as big. Now, these things have accidentally eaten people and they are real problems. Australian pythons typically aren't big enough to hurt people. Now, as constrictors, what does that mean? So they grab their prey, they've used all their senses, their sight, their taste, their heat pits, and they've grabbed, let's say, a rat. Now, they've got to wrap that rat up and the way that they kill their prey is by squeezing it. They suffocate it and squeeze their body until the prey is lifeless and they swallow it whole. Now, can you tell the difference between a python and a venomous snake? 
Well, the answer is yes, but sometimes it can get really difficult. And because Australia has so many venomous snakes as well, really, you shouldn't guess, especially if you've been bitten or know someone that's bitten. If you're bitten by a snake, go to hospital, do your first aid treatment. But you can tell pythons apart. Um, they typically have a much thicker muscular head because they need it to hold onto their prey because rather than injecting venom, they have to constrict it. Now, pythons are often more coloured Okay, from greens to browns to black and yellows, and they're normally uh, more visually uh, beautiful than venomous snakes. But it's tricky, so don't guess. For pythons at your house, I say you're very lucky, and you've probably got less rats and mice than your neighbours. Now, you don't need to worry about a python at your house. Uh, for a python to come inside your house is really rare. Okay, but outside, you do have options. There are professional snake catchers throughout Australia who can come and remove a snake and release it to the wild. Check online, have a look at your closest snake catcher and rather than like they used to in the old days, take a shovel to the python's head, none of that, call your local snake catcher. They'll come and remove it and place it in the wild. Okay, homework for today. I want you to tell me how many species of python are there in Australia? List them please. And the second bit of homework is, draw me your favorite. Include its coloration and a couple of sentences on why it's colored like that or what habitat it lives in and where it's found. That's all for today, see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us, and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. Uh, this is what I do, connecting people with nature, and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.